seizures are markedly reduced uh, in patients who have this surgery. Most patients with seizures don't, don't need this surgery, but for certain kinds of seizure, it's, uh, it's really necessary to do this. Yeah. Now, you also discuss what we can learn about the mind and brain from cases of conjoined twins. How does this condition affect twins' individuality, their minds, and their souls? Yes, uh, there is a small number of um, twins who are born uh, conjoined at at the head, and they actually share parts of their brain. Um, and um, there are a couple of twins in Canada who, who who have this condition, and they've grown up together. And it's Tatiana and Krista Hogan is their name, and they um, share important parts of of the deep part of their brain. And they can do remarkable things that, for example, they can see partially out of each other's eyes. And if you touch one twin's leg, the other person knows you're touching that twin's leg. Um, they sh often share emotions, although not, not entirely. But curiously, they don't seem to share higher intellectual function. That is that uh, there's no evidence that, for example, one twin can study math and the other can study history. And they both end up knowing the subjects. That is, that there, there, there's a definite distinction between their intellects, their capacity for abstract thought. And they certainly don't share free, free will, meaning that they have different personalities. Well, one twin likes certain things and doesn't like, and doesn't like other things. So what they, the twins who share parts of the brain show us is that there are parts of the brain uh, and there are parts of the mind that can be physically shared. That, uh, that are physically part of the brain that can be shared with other people if the connections are just right. But there are other parts of the human soul that are not part of the brain and really can't be shared. And these two girls are definitely different people. They're completely different people in many ways, even though they share some uh, perceptual abilities. And again, a very rare condition, um, but when it does come along, it, it gives scientists, neuroscientists, the ability to Get a, get a glimpse um, at the, the differences and connections between the mind and the brain. Well, your book makes an argument for the immortality of the mind and the soul. You discuss NDEs, near-death experiences. They're a fascinating phenomenon in recent decades, but you also report that they've been recorded by many cultures across you know thousands of years. Can you give us a few examples of those cultures and what their experiences looked like in the past? Sure. Um, Near-death ex experiences are surprisingly common. There, there's, there's no question. There's, there's been probably tens of millions of people over over human history have have had things like this, and um, they they um, there tends to be patterns to them that 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 occur across cultures. Um, people um, often feel that they're leaving their body. They often see th see their body, and they will hover in the vicinity of where they have died. Um, and they often describe a kind of a tunnel experience where they go down a passageway and they come into a different world. And the world they come into is often very beautiful, um, although there are some negative ex experiences. There are, there are people who have hellish new death ex experiences. Uh, they're probably the most common ones are the pleasant ones. And people go to the other side of the tunnel and they see a beautiful world. Um, they often will have some interaction with the, with the divine figure. Uh, and they um, generally will meet dead friends and relatives. Um, a, a fascinating aspect of near-death experiences is that, uh, to my knowledge, there's never been a, a report of someone having a near-death experience where they met anyone on the other side who wasn't dead. Uh, that is, the only people they meet are dead people. Uh, and there have been a number of recorded instances where people with near-death experiences have met a dead person on the other side of the tunnel who they didn't know was dead before they died. That is, the, the death was not known to them. Uh, one example was a little girl who was in a car accident and she had a near-death experience in the hospital and her sibling had died uh, in the car accident, but she didn't know that. She saw mm -hmm. her sibling on the other side of the tunnel. Her parents had not died and she didn't see her parents on the other side of the tunnel. Um, and there's a very famous near-death ex ex experience, um, a woman named Pam Reynolds, uh, was a patient who had an aneurysm at the base of, of her brain, a blood vessel that was about to burst. And she needed a very radical kind of surgery to fix the aneurysm. 
It was done at, uh, in Phoenix at the Barrow Institute by a neurosurgeon named Robert Spetzler. And what uh, she had to have done was she had to have her body cool down to about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, put on a, a heart-lung machine, and then her heartbeat was stopped. And Dr. Spetzler went into her brain, drained the blood out of her brain, fixed the, fixed the aneurysm in 30 minutes, and then restarted her heart, reperfused her brain, and she came back to life. And this was done in the early 1990s. And she made an excellent recovery. And she reports that when this happened, she felt, uh, as soon as her heart stopped, it felt as though her, um, her where she, she popped out of her body, went up to the ceiling of the operating room, watched the whole operation. She said she wasn't frightened. She said it was beautiful and fascinating. She heard the conversations the doctors had, which could be checked. She heard the music that was playing in the operating room. She saw the instruments. She then went down a tunnel. She saw her grandmother and her uncle who said she had to come back. She came back, went back in, into her body. And she said it felt like diving into a pool of ice water. It's kind of interesting because her body temperature was 50 degrees. So it really was a pool of ice water. Um, and so this is probably the best documented case of near-death experiences in that she was documented by all kinds of machines in the operating room as being completely dead while she had these experiences. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. So you can use those measurements as a way to verify what she was experiencing in her story. Yes. Uh, which does make it stand out. Uh, now, you've also got a chapter in The Immortal Mind that addresses the Darwinian view that the human mind evolved gradually through natural selection and random mutation. What aspects of human life do you argue are immaterial and could not be products of a Darwinian process? The capacity for abstract thought, which includes re reason and, and, and judgment, uh, those are, are not material things, and they can't possibly have evolved by a Darwinian mechanism, uh, because Darwinian mechanisms only work uh, if they work at all. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big uh, supporter of Darwinism as good science, but uh, even if one uh, believes that some aspects uh, of, um, of human biology arose through some kind of process of natural selection, um, there's no way that, uh, the, that the human mind could, it could arise that way because our capacity for abstract thought and our capacity for free will are not material things and are not, su and, and are not subject to Darwinian mechanisms. The, the human soul was created directly by God at the, at the time of our conception. Right. Yeah. And of course, you know, along the Darwinian framework, uh, the intelligent design research community is challenging that on so many fronts these days. Yes. Uh, I mean, we have, you know, a systems biology approach to uh, systems engineering, I should say, approach to biology, where you look at biology top down instead of bottom up. And it seems to make a whole lot more sense. Um, and then there's the whole immaterial genome that uh, Richard uh, Sternberg has been working on. and Which is a very, very exciting idea. And the ID science on this is, is really first rate. It's really excellent science. 